Hello, everyone. I welcome all of you to the ninth webinar in the Connect webinar series from JSW Steel. JSW Steel is India's leading integrated steel manufacturer with a footprint in over 100 countries. We have launched this Connect series with the intent to connect the most enterprising engineers, uh, architects, MSME students, and channel partners. Today's webinar focus is good construction practices for durability. I'm pleased to introduce the speaker for this webinar, Mr. Shrikar Kulkarni. He is the founder of SB Kulkarni and Associates. Mr. Kulkarni has over 35 years industry experience, including 10 years in hardcore construction field involving execution of residential and industrial projects. He has delivered over 400 technical lectures and published multiple technical articles in national and international conferences. I'm delighted to see so many of you are connected today. So without any delay, let's welcome Mr. Shrikant Kulkarni. Mr. Kulkarni, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Ravi. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Uh, I am indeed uh, uh, very happy uh, to be with you. Uh, thanks to JSW Steel and particularly Ravi for inviting me for giving this presentation on uh, uh, a very interesting topic. Uh, that topic is good construction practices for durability. Uh, you all know that uh, durability is very important for all the structures and uh, all the structures have been you know built for certain years of uh, uh, durable life and uh, that durability say if it is a metro project then you know maybe we design it for 110 years and you know all public structures we design for 150 years plus and all that so under such situation uh, what makes it more durable is the good construction practices you know you you may have the best of the materials used in your construction but if you don't follow good construction practices all those materials are wasted and you don't get the best out of that so having said that i think we will uh, take on the presentation you can see this again I did not see myself. Uh, well, before I actually start my presentation, I would like to uh, request uh, all the architects, engineers, and students who have logged in, they should uh, type their questions in the question box. So that, you know, I will take up those questions at the end of the webinar. So whenever I am uh, presenting, uh, if any question comes to your mind, I think you should uh, type it and then we will refer it to later on. Uh, I want to introduce you to the good construction practices. Concrete, you know, is the most widely used construction material in the world next to water. <coughs> It is a site-made material. Its quality can vary from site to site depending upon the material constitutions. Then uh, there is a considerable lack of understanding actually for adopting standard construction practices. You move across India, uh, you know, different parts of the country, people have different construction practices, though we're all governed by the standard construction practices laid down by IS-456. In India, a large number of concrete structures are getting, you know, prematurely, uh, you know, deteriorated and they are showing signs of distress. Uh, perhaps, you know, one of the major reasons is not following the good construction practices. And to follow good construction practices, it is essential to make economical, strong and durable concrete structures. Construction defects, you know, are commonly found where good construction practices are not correctly followed. A very well said uh, statement. Uh, for a civil engineer, 
you know there is no such thing as a little mistake you see in this picture what has happened the alignment has gone uh, haywire and when the the two you know uh, spans have met you see the wide difference in the center line so there is no scope for you know little mistake even small little mistake can lead you to big disasters uh, i will first talk about some uh, aspects of good construction practices related to the reinforcement and it makes sense also because i am talking from the platform of jsw steel so we will uh, do the shubharam you know with uh, with the talk on Do's and don'ts for reinforcement placement work first. Uh, steel, you know, is a very uh, uh, important material that makes concrete more durable. It can take more strength. You know, concrete only takes compression. All the tensile forces are taken by the steel. And Indian standard specification for high strength deformed steel bar. Uh, uh steel and these wires they conform to is 1786 and uh, there are four varieties of uh, strength grades one is fe415 this is pretty old one uh, almost uh, i think it was introduced somewhere in 7980 after that fe500 come fe550 has also come and now fe550 b also has come d stands for ductile and this uh, the figures which are following the symbol if you indicate the specified minimum uh, yield stress in newton per square millimeter this this fe 550d is a latest introduction uh, which is really a boon for the construction industry because you know uh, your your structure if it is brittle it is likely to break and you know its durability is going to be low But if the structure is ductile, in that case, you know it can it can uh, uh, take different shape depending upon what kind of positive or negative stresses it is taking, and the ductile ductile structure definitely is you know lives longer. It has got more durable life, and ductile steel definitely contributes lot in adding durability to the. uh building construction so uh, i think you know the structural consultants perhaps can think of using more and more of uh, 550d because it has got more strength also and plus it is ductile also it can it, it will have very you know uh, controlled deflections in terms of the uh, long span etc so that's one interesting uh, matter which i wanted to tell you uh, I, we have seen what were the indian codes uh, there are international codes also like astm a61588 uh, they have three grades of steel grade 300 400 550 british standard has got two grades of steel you know It's just a, a kind of a side information i want to share with you as per is 456 2000 the reinforcement in concrete shall be shall be any of the following for example mild steel medium tensile steel bar conforming to is 432 of late i don't think you know mild steel is used as a distribution steel only nobody uses it uh, for you know uh, taking the main tensile stress then there is high strength deformed bar conforming to is 1786 etc etc cover is a very important aspect you may use you know 550d or if e415 whatever you want to, but if you don't provide the proper cover to the steel you know you are not doing justice to the use of such high quality material because you know steel needs to be protected from the atmospheric you know pollution moisture etc because you know steel is susceptible to corrosion if steel corrodes then you had it i always compare you know uh, this cover to the steel you know is like what flesh is to our bones if there is no flesh if the bones are exposed then what will happen to you you can imagine 
So on the same line, you can see here, this cover plays very important role in increasing the durability. We have to provide cover as per the provision given by IS 456-2000 for different exposure conditions. Uh, there are different shapes and sizes of uh, uh, covers. Uh, depending upon the requirement, you can manufacture that. One more thing, the grade of the concrete used for the cover should be one grade higher than the mother concrete. For example, if mother concrete is M40, your cover should be of M45 grade. You, know. you can see here, these rebars, the rebars are not at all tied here. The rebars are left untied. If this is done, how the loads are going to be transferred from? Use, use of, you know, uh, inappropriate material, like in a stone chip for the cover, which is not at all right. As I was mentioning to you about the corrosion, see, in this picture, perhaps the cover was not provided adequately. So the, you know, humidity and the moisture entered inside the concrete through the thin cover and the steel has corroded and once the steel corrodes it expands because of the corrosion almost six to seven times you know the volume is expanded when compared to original volume and then this uh, cover you know spalls out and you can see the steel is exposed and the durability is a big question mark here for such structure here one more example in marine construction you see the cover has been totally eaten away by the sulfates and chlorides in the concrete. And chloride is a poison to the steel. You know. Chlorides accelerates the corrosion of the steel like anything. You can see here that the steel bars are practically eaten away by the seawater because of the presence of chlorides. Here also you can see uh, the effect of corrosion. And corrosion is like a cancer to the concrete. You know. The durability is gone. Can, can anyone guarantee the life of the cancer patient? No, it's very uncertain. On the same lines, uh, when the corrosion takes place heavily in the building, it's very difficult to predict the balanced life of the structure. The durability is highly affected. See, one more wrong practice. The bars have been displaced and this displacement has taken place because people have moved on this without putting up wooden plank. The ideal thing is on these bars, the, the wooden plank should have been laid and people should walk on the top of it. If, if that is not done, then you know, this displacement of the bars will take place. It should not happen. If your RCC consultant has said that your bar should be at say 100, uh, 100 millimeter apart, then uh, it should be 100 millimeter throughout till the final execution of completing work. It's not that at the time of placement you have put 100 millimeter spacing and then it becomes 150 something like that. Then the load distribution will not be uniform. Here also you can see uh, the, the space has increased. It has been displaced. Uh, in slab, you know, on the top of the beam, this negative moment uh, exists and for negative moments we provide these uh, negative steel uh, reinforcement top bars you know and these top bars they have to remain in top to take care of that negative bending moment but you can see here there is this top bar is practically touching the bottom bar why because no chair has been provided to separate this top bar from the bottom bar so the provision of chair is totally missing. This is an absolutely wrong construction practice used here on this side. Then we come to this uh, slide where, you know, the cover blocks you see, number one, this cover block is uh, placed here. Then I don't find any cover block in the distance of at least one meter, you know. What will happen, you know, this one cover block is not going to keep this you know, the case of the reinforcement at that particular level. If suppose this is 15 mm or 20 mm cover block, uh, you know, when people are walking on the top of this, you know, this is going to settle down. So ideally, at 
every two feet distance, every two feet distance, there should be one cover block provided in a zigzag manner. For example, if one is here, then another should have been here, then the next should have been here, maybe one more here, like that. Then one more uh, defect normally we find at the site is people don't provide, you know, ring for the column bars. You know. Without providing rings in this portion, the concrete is in, concreting is being done here in this beam column junction. Uh, what happens because of this, these main bars of the column, they get displaced and the alignment gets highly disturbed. And you know, many times these bars, they, 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 they are not as per the RCC design. And uh, so what is important? One ring should be provided at the slab level and two, three rings should be provided in this portion so that, you know, when you go for the next lift of the column, the alignment is intact. Now we come to uh, the, this, this way I already discussed there is no provision of, uh, you know, cover blocks and chairs in this side also. Here the uh, bars are literally touching the shuttering. As per IS 456, uh, what should be the uh, cover to the steel bar? In the mild exposure condition, it should be 20 millimeter minimum. For moderate exposure condition, 30 millimeter. Severe exposure, 45, very severe, 50, and extreme. Exposure condition, it should be 75. For example, uh, I will give you this uh, Mumbai Burli Bandra ceiling bridge project. Uh, there, you know, it is a kind of an extreme exposure condition. So there, you know, for the for, uh, piles, etc., whatever structure, you know, is being uh, constructed there, the, the cover minimum provided is 75. For our normal RCC buildings, residential buildings, uh, it is a moderate exposure condition, let us say, in a place like, say, Pune or Nagpur, something like that. Then the, the minimum cover required is just 30 millimeter. Congestion of reinforcement is another uh, common problem which we are facing today. Uh, you go to any metro project, for example, you know, the piers, uh, it is full of steel reinforcement, and you know, there is hardly uh, any place. There is hardly any place for uh, uh, making the concrete flow uh, through the reinforcement, uh, and this is a, this is very very uh, undesirable, undesirable because because of this the concrete if it doesn't flow right up to the bottom when you are pouring it from the top naturally you can't pour the concrete from the bottom it has to go from top to bottom uh, it will get segregated after hitting these rings and the main bars you know. And segregated concrete will have lost its homogeneity and it, it would not have the proper strength. So the co column will be, co column concrete will become very weak. So this congestion can be avoided by bundling the bars. You know, like three bars, four bars can be bundled together, and they can be tied so that you know enough space is left between two bundle of bars, and concrete can easily flow through that. Uh, it was old practice where people were using, you know, overlaps to connect two steel bars. It was a very common practice, you know. Uh, but uh, there, there was major disadvantage in that. Number one, it used to consume a lot of steel. For example, you know, in tension, the 60 times diameter is the lap length. In compression, it is around 40 times the diameter. You imagine if it is one meter, uh, you know, for example, it is if we say 20 millimeter bar, so 1.2 meter lap we have to provide. Can you imagine that lap length which is going in that area is total waste of steel, and plus it will also add to the congestion of steel in the columns and beams, etc., uh, which will affect the pouring of the concrete. So these days, it's very common, you know, to use couplers like this. 
these are threaded from inside bars are threaded and then you know fitted like this in this the lap length is totally avoided the load transfer is absolutely 100% there is no issue about the load transfer from this bar to this bar and you know there is lot of uh, space available in between two bars so this is a very good practice <coughs> so instead of providing the laps if uh, uh, couplers are used it brings a lot of economy in steel consumption and also it brings a lot of ease in placement of the couple see there is one more case Uh, these bars, what you see here, these are the top bars of the uh, beam, perhaps you know, and, and there is no space between the bars at all. These there are four bars, and they are practically touching. I not just imagine how concrete will flow between these bars, and you know, every concrete bar has to be covered properly with concrete. It should be the concrete should surround all you know perimeter of the steel. But in this case. it is not at all happening so under such situation the bars have to be spaced properly maybe in two layers you can provide bar in two layers you know and then you know uh, this should be avoided uh, there is incorrect spacing of reinforcement you can see here this is say roughly 6 7 inch is the space here and suddenly one bar is missing here this should not happen the bar should be properly spaced as per the rcc design otherwise the uh, the stresses will not be you know taken care of here the top bars are touching the bottom bars we have already discussed that now we will see how to store and protect the reinforcement see as i told you steel is very susceptible to corrosion so if you store the steel bars in open or if you just you know place the steel bars on the open ground on the soil or on a concrete platform you know uh, ground and concrete areas absorb moisture and this moisture can lead to rusting so what is required is the rebars should be put on the top of a raised non metallic platform such as wooden pallets etc and plus uh, the bar should be protected with a tarpaulin sheet also particularly in uh, rainy season so that you know you can avoid exposure to the water and moisture and which will save it from the corrosion then the we have to cover the rebar with thick protective tarpaulin etc secure it with cinder blocks and uh, that is how we have to avoid it we have to we have to avoid the exposure to the moisture the reinforcement steel is a composite material hence a proper bond between the two materials concrete and reinforcement is uh, first requirement and that will happen if concrete is homogeneous now i think we have covered most of the uh, parts related to the steel reinforcement placement etc now we will talk few uh, issues about concrete uh see today a ready mix concrete has become a norm in all the metro cities of india i know uh, this webinar has been you know joined by many people from some small towns and districts and you know cities where ready mix concrete may not be using where still this uh, kind of you know baby mixers may be used for making concrete uh where you know this there are issues related to the proportioning you know and using this kind of you know boxes where you know the box size is 1.25 cft that is the volume so it comes to uh, you know 12 inch by 12 inch by 15 inch that is something like that so the proportioning if it is volumetric then you know it has to be done using such kind of boxes but uh, we see that many times people use those you know steel gamelas and you know uh, in the initially you know the instructions are passed on to the laborers they perfectly follow you know the number of uh, tagaris or gamelas 
to be put into that but once they get tired they slowly uh, start putting less number of lamellae of sand or aggregate or whatever it is so that disturbs the proportioning and uh, you know uh, that adds to the cement consumption because less number of cement uh, i mean sand and aggregate means uh, your yield is reduced and you know you instead of 100 bags for a slab you will use perhaps 100 to 120 bags so proportioning is very important As whatever is your grade of the concrete accordingly the proportions are decided for cement sand and aggregate water cement ratio i don't have to explain anything it is so important you know water cement ratio decides the strength of the concrete Lesser the water cement ratio, more is the strength. We all know that rule. But in you know small towns, you see such you know dappas are used. There is there is no you know measurement in this. He doesn't know whether he is putting four liters, three liters, or two liters of water by putting one dapp of water. But you know uh, because of this, you know what happens because of his pure judgment. You know, he goes by his pure judgment and ends up using water cement ratio of 0.6 minimum. And you know, such concrete with water cement ratio of say 0.55, 0.6 will have definitely no strength. You know, we we engineers understand that. So if at all you know you want to use some uh, provision of this kind, and you can use you know a five liter can which is readily available in the market. and you know you can measure it maybe if you want to put in you know, a per batch say 25 liters or say 22 liters uh, you can put you know um, small measuring cans and that should be the good consistent practice then mixer is another issue uh, uh, these blades play important role these blades what role they have you know the concrete when the I mean, when the concrete is you know mixed in this the drum is you know when rotating this drum rotation is supposed to you know bring the concrete which is at the bottom which is supposed to bring it at the top and then the concrete is supposed to have a free fall and this action should be repeated for several number of times but that will happen provided these blades are properly placed you see uh, there is almost 4 inch difference here now in this kind of situation this concrete will not get lifted it will remain in the bottom only and the mixing will not be homogeneous so what should be done there should be hardly 1 inch 1 one, 1 inch uh, gap here you know and there should be perhaps one more plate welded here maybe one more bar welded here so that you know the concrete gets lifted and it falls down freely from this top and it gets you know the homogeneous mixing out of it so many times you get bad concrete because your mixer you know is having defects so you should look into that also this is a typical example of a uh, unorganized batching plant you you should not uh, buy concrete from such plants see the see what a shabby condition of plant you know no housekeeping nothing materials are just lying here and there one should avoid going to such rmc plants where you know things are not in proper shape uh in small towns as i mentioned to you concrete is manually placed you see there are no no planks provided these uh, laborers they are moving freely on the uh, bars they are disturbing the bar uh, alignment and uh, this 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 should not happen they, and you can see even the the bars here uh, they have not provided enough uh, length of the bar here to uh, have a proper lap length naturally you know you can see here they have provided proper you know length of the bar here which is coming out but here this is Not, not acceptable. Perhaps it will not follow the criteria of 40 times diameter here, which is required to be provided. 
uh, from which height we should place the concrete. Uh, the the IS says that you know the maximum height of placement should be 1.5 meter. So anything more than that will segregate the concrete, and segregated concrete is not a good concrete in terms of the strength and durability. Uh, especially this issue is faced, you know, severely when you place concrete for footings. I mean, open footings, you see, uh, this concrete is being placed from the top. This concrete hits the rings and the columbars, and in the process, it totally segregates. It segregates, and all segregated concrete goes into the footing. And what you get finally is this honeycombed concrete for the footing. Uh, friends, imagine that you know your footing is such an important structural element. The whole building's load is transferred, you know, to the mother earth through this footing. Don't you think that the the footing concrete should be the strongest? Next to that, the columns. The column transfer the the load of entire flooring, you know, to the beams. So the entire slab is supported by the columns, and the column concrete also should be the strongest. But actually, see what is happening, you know. And so you know here what should be done? We should provide a small ladder here, wherein one person can you know stand here in between, and he can pour the concrete from that position without making it you know undergo a fall of say eight feet, nine feet, ten feet like that. This is a typical uh, segregated concrete mix you see, which is coming out of the mixer. Perhaps this mixer didn't have, you know, proper blade positioning. And here also you can see uh, a lot of segregation has taken place. This is another, you know, typical case of a segregated concrete. See, you can see the aggregates practically being separated, and there is no homogeneity of the concrete mix. Uh, this 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 will this will lead to what you can imagine you know there will be very poor strength in this concrete and I don't know only perhaps God can save this structure uh, and this is the provision of and of inappropriate cover material we already seen this then uh, pumping defects these days you know in uh, metro cities IMC concrete is used which is pumped to the required uh, level. And see this. This is a leaky joint, you know, and it has spread this mortar everywhere. The slurry has come out. Now this not only it has created shabbiness here, but number two, because slurry is lost, the water cement ratio has gone for a toss. And you know this concrete definitely will have pumping issues also because you know if the slurry is gone out, means the concrete has become more. Uh, viscous and more stiff and then it will add to the load on the pumps and plus the end concrete which you are receiving will be harsh so you should see that the joints are properly you know made watertight before the pumping starts this is a very common site at many sites you know people religiously fill the concrete cube so that you know they can test it and find the compressive strength. But what about the curing procedure? This is very commonly seen in many sites. You know, even many um, major sites in the metro cities also. I have seen you know such kind of situation where cubes are taken, but then they are left in the pond without water. If you don't provide you know proper curing to the cubes. You know, the strength is going to be affected. Perhaps you will get only 60-70% strength of the cube. And this strength is correlated to so many things, you know. And, you know, if you get this reduced strength, then, you know, consultant, architect, everybody will jump into it, saying that, you know, cubes have failed and then, you know, it leads to so many meetings, discussions, whether low test to be taken, poor test is to be done and whatnot. But basically, the concrete which has gone into the structure is very good. It meets all the requirement. But since the cubes have not been properly cured, you know, you get misguiding results. So the water should be, uh, water level should be maintained till top 
throughout. And if you don't cure the pump rate, the consequence of inadequate curing is early curing is cracking because of a plastic sink is cracked. You know the whole slab will you know have so many cracks and etc. And when the cracks come, you know the stain carrying capacity goes down. The leakages would lead to corrosion of the steel and so many other problems. Now we will talk about few issues related to masonry and plaster. Uh, concrete aerated blocks are very commonly used these days in the major towers of uh, you know, metro cities and major projects. But in small towns, you know, in cities still, these you know, burnt bricks are used. Bricks should be of good quality. You see, this is over burnt brick. It should not be uh, used. This is under burnt brick. You can see here. It will not have any, you know, required strength. It will not meet IS requirement. These are few, you know, used bricks which have come out of the structure. Some people prefer to reuse it again, but this should not be done because there will not be bond between this brick and the fresh brick because there is already mortar uh, which is there, which will not allow that proper bonding. Then the bricks have to be wetted properly uh, before they are used because if you use dry bricks, the dry bricks will absorb the moisture from mortar and the mortar will lose its plasticity and two bricks which are supposed to join together uh, through that bond of the mortar, there will be separation of these two bricks and that should be avoided. This is a very funny and classic case of ignorance of good construction practices. What we do normally on this window? We provide a lintel beam like this and you know this he see here the lintel beam is missing. They have provided just some two, three, twelve mm dia bars on this jelly, and on that the brickwork is done. Even this one fit brickwork's load, you know, has made this reinforcement bar bend like this, and you know this is not at all acceptable. These, these are the kind of the uh, ignorances which we see at site. And see, this is another serious area. Just below the beam, this layer of the bricks, they are always left, you know, like this. There is no mortar provided at this point. And this hollowness is left by the brick mason. He assumes that the plastering mason would come and do the network. But actually what happens while doing the plastering, the material doesn't enter inside fully. And this hollowness inside, uh, later on, you know, leads to cracks. When this beam bends because of the load in the, say, time of, say, in the, in the time span of 5-10 years, this, this hollow portion immediately cracks and leads to the cracks here at the junction. So what is the solution normally? You should provide... Uh, whatever is the gap, two inch, three inch, you should provide plain cement concrete, PCC here in the top layer. And this will take care of, you know, this problem. So bricks should be good bricks. What are the properties of good bricks? There should be uniform color. All edges should be straight. They should be rectangular. And the compressive strength should be between 2.5 to 5 MPA and the size should be uniform. See, this heap is uh, uh, of good bricks. And here again we see this underburnt and overburnt uh, bricks. And, you know, a bad brick would consist of following properties like varying color. They are, you know, unburnt, overburnt, size variation. They're porous. Uh, some people at site, they make a you know, tank wherein they place the bricks and you know the bricks are fully soaked in the water and then they are used. If it is not possible then the bricks can be you know wetted by a uh, water jet like this. No issues. Uh, as I was mentioning to you uh, in metro cities it is very common to use autoclave, autoclave aerated concrete. Ground. There are many benefits of using this 
when this block is you know factory made so there is no issue of the quality in terms of the strength the shape size the edges so everything is in perfect shape and plus these are lightweight so because these blocks are lightweight the overall dead load on the building get reduced thereby reducing the load on the building thereby reducing the running moments the still requirement required is less uh, the overall when the load gets reduced you know the design becomes economical and plus you see the joints the joints are so uniform even the mortar consumption is less so uh, if you can use autoclave variated blocks whether it is a metro city or a small city or a you know town or a district district whatever it is, if it is available one should use this because you know anyways this soil breaks are you know uh, not going to give any benefit and we can conserve some soil soil and some ecological thing also can be taken care of one more mistake which is done at site is people prepare the mortar and then use it for the whole day by adding water whenever it dries up that is not at all recommended uh, this mortar has got a you know limitation in in terms of setting time before the final setting time uh, occurs this mortar should be consumed so these laborers they are so lazy they will you know prepare a uh, mortar for the whole day in one shot in the morning so that you know they can take rest for the whole day without doing anything but that's not recommended and they will use you know they will add water whenever it dries up they, they will go for lunch when they come back after lunch they see water has dried up they will put water again make it workable by making it workable it has become usable but it has lost lost its all properties in terms of strength and you know a bonding property the water is supposed to bond with the brick surface when it is used for plaster and it is supposed to um, bond to bricks by providing that bond strength but that is lost so uh, this this is one more uh, area where one has to be careful so prepare the material which is going to be used in the period of 2 hours that's all again make the next batch and like that you know it should be done and if you don't do it as i mentioned to you when you use you know this steel uh, mortar this separation of plaster happens from the surface and it leads to huge cracks like this and it also leads to lot of dampness on the surface as you can see there is so much dampness that has come because this well, this steel mortar is highly porous the water enters through that and you know your costly interiors you have spent lakhs and lakhs of rupees on your interiors that all goes for a toss because you know a bad plaster will allow the moisture and water to come in and it will spoil your color and all your you know wall paintings and you know all these decorative papers which you put one more case see this leakages and dampness seepages see this wall how you know this porous plaster has spoiled the whole interior and you know these bad construction practices are sometimes so um, severe that you know there are many building collapses i stay in mumbai and uh, i have seen so many cases here where you know the buildings have collapsed prematurely within 2 years 3 years after their construction because they were number one all Ill, they were constructed on illegal sites and you know some scrupulous contractors they have you know used their own uh, standards of construction practices without referring to any is or whatever it is and buildings have collapsed see this is one more building where it has collapsed badly one bridge has collapsed here you know uh, perhaps because of bad construction practices or bad design or whatever it is now we will talk about issues related to concrete production uh, concrete as you all know is a mixture of cementitious material mortar aggregate and mixture so what are the kind of the uh, do's and don'ts 
which help which, which help to make the concrete more durable let us have a look at it so in concrete flyer ggbs silica film is also used these days particularly when uh, rmc concrete is used it is very common to use you know these supplementary cementitious materials along with plastic other and super plastic other also so what is the sequence of preparing concrete first is selection of ingredients then batching then mixing transporting placing compacting finishing and curing this is a common sequence used uh, selection of concrete ingredients which are the main ingredients cement aggregates in aggregates we have coarse and fine aggregates then there is water admixture and cement dishes material when it comes to cement you know uh, which cement which type of cement which grade of cement is to be used it all depends on the type of the construction you are in now you know uh, in market 33 grade is almost you know uh, vanished you don't get 33 grade what you get is 43 grade and 53 grade you get ppc and you get slag cement these are the common cements which are used uh, it is very customary these days to use 53 grade cement for making concrete of high grade and you know for finishing works people use 43 grade or uh, portland porcelain that is flyer spec cement i would personally recommend that you should use ppc for finishing works waterproofing work and you know tile fixing work etc that is non structural work and you know 53 grade cement should be used for or 43 grade cement should be used for rcc construction and where you require very high durability like you know construction in uh, marine environment or maybe construction in a marshy land you know where a uh, lot of uh, sulfates chlorides etc exist in the soil or water which can damage the concrete very badly then the slag cement should be uh, the best option there are many factors you know which uh, which will which will uh, allow you to select the right type of cement maybe the functional requirements ground conditions environment exposures speed and method of construction if you are looking for very speedy construction like quick cast pistas etc you can't use ppc you know which will have low uh, early strength you have to go for 53 opc or maybe even one grade higher than that that is irst 40 grade cement which is much much finer than opc 53 also and you know uh, uh, where you know you require high durability i mentioned you can use ppc or psc aggregates uh, aggregates properties influence your workability strength stiffness creep etc and economy also the durability also uh in aggregate there are two types of aggregates coarse aggregates you know like 20 mm 10 mm 40 mm their shape should be cubical rounded you know flaky and rounded uh, aggregate should be avoided because that will not give you number one cohesive mix and it will increase your cement consumption and it will also increase your water demand for getting certain level of slump and it should have all the pro mechanical properties conforming to gis and uh, alkali aggregate reaction is one more important aspect uh, especially for some parts of india in you know, northern part eastern part where aggregates are reactive the alkalis in cement react with uh, aggregate and the aggregates expand after you place the concrete it start expanding and thereby internal stresses are developed and concrete cracks and there will be goes for a toss so aggregate should be tested before the project starts now all these points of view fine aggregates uh, these days it is common to use you know manufactured sand also in many metro cities many rmc plants they use manufactured sand but in in the many uh, other parts of india you know still sand is used as a fine aggregate uh, it's you know 4.75 mm and below size that is known as a fine aggregate uh, it 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 should be uh, 
it should have you know a very uh, less amount of salt it should be free from you know chloride etc so that you know you don't get uh, uh, the water property or concrete property doesn't get affected chemically is says that you know the material finer than 75 micron should be uh, just up to 3% per natural sand and uh, for the manufacturers and it should be less than 15% uh, what is the impact on concrete mix from the aggregates the size affects water demand workability cement content then the surface structure affects the workability paste demand and uh, grading affects the paste content that is economy because you know if it is not well graded then you will end up using more paste means more cement then water absorption again you know will highly and uh, uh, describe your mix design you know, there will be a lot of uh, water correction to be done in the mix design we we have already spoken about water cement ratio uh water reacts with cement and makes it said that we all know the hydration takes place water gives workability to the concrete but exactly how much water should be used you know on an average it is seen that only 23% of weight of uh cement is required for chemical reaction it means water cement ratio 0.23 is required for the chemical reaction and uh, about 15% water is required that is water cement is another 0.15 for filling into gel pores so roughly 38% of water is required for no capillary condition say 0.4 so any anything more than 0.4 in terms of water cement ratio is used you know for workability so 0.4 is the threshold uh, water cement ratio which is required for making a uh, durable concrete but of late you know people are using very low water cement ratios like 0.25 0.27 uh, in that area when they want to make m90 m90 or m100 concrete so that there is a different consideration for that but this is the minimum uh, water content that is required for chemical reaction IS four five six has given specification for selection of the water source. Uh, we say that you know potable water is good for concrete, but potable water may not be good for concrete because if potable water contains a lot of sulfates and chlorides, then in that case, you know that is harmful for the concrete. But whereas it may not be so harmful for the human being. So the various points have been given like organic, inorganic, sulfates, chlorides, all that should be. Uh, supplementary cement this is material like clay ash calcium clay gdpr silica film etc uh, all this have to confirm to the bis and uh, you can't use any material you know, without testing chemical admixtures should confirm to bis uh, 9103 chemical admixtures like water reducing admixture iron water reducing admixture etc super practice these days uh, acrylic admixtures like pce are used for manufacturing you know very high strength concrete all these have to be covered by bis code uh, before any uh, plasticizer is finally you know uh, chosen it should be tested for its compatibility with the cement because you know all all plasticizers will not be compatible with one cement and all cements will not be compatible with one plasticizer so you have to match the compatibility by using marshcon test you can see here this is the marshcon you know which has a small test is there which will allow you to decide whether the plasticizer is compatible uh typical problems with super plasticizers are the compatibility with cement then there is the variation in specific gravity and solid content of super plasticizer these are the major two problem so when super plasticizer is received at site you should immediately check the specific gravity of it and also the solid content if there is variation in this it means there is a variation in the batch and it will affect your slump and you know slump retention etc 
uh, slum plot during transportation is a very common thing in rmc concrete when the transit mixer is traveling from the plant to the site in cities like mumbai pune bangalore delhi the traffic jams you know will hold the uh, transit mixer in the traffic for hours together at the same time what is to be done the concrete is designed for say uh, two hours retention you know slump retention if if the transit mixer takes three hours to reach the site then what should be done normally uh, that mix, mixer driver and the cleaner they would they would add some water to the concrete and make it workable but by adding water you have spoiled the original composition of the concrete in terms of water cement ratio if you know he has added some 5 liters of water it means the water cement ratio has gone up now and it will reduce the strength and more water cement ratio means less durability so that should not be done in a such situation you should as add plasticizer under the advice of quality engineer in the mixer and make the concrete workable again. the concrete batching the process of measuring concrete mix ingredients is either by mass or volume in ready mix concrete it is of course by mass and to produce a concrete of uniform quality the ingredient must be measured accurately for each batch when we talk of rmc plant the calibration of the plant on a regular basis on a uh, at, at a given interval maybe after two months three months whatever is decided should be done religiously and most concrete today is batched and mixed by ready mix concrete plant and smaller site use the traditional volume method of concrete batching there the problems uh, are faced we have seen you know what kind of problems they face you know instead of using those small you know measuring boxes uh, there are such uh, uh, mini batching plants available where you can see there are three compartments where you can add aggregate sand and cement and there is a small uh weighing arrangement also here you can see how much uh, how many kg of material you have added in this and there is a water tank here you can control the water quantity also going into the mixer and this is a much better way of doing the concrete on a on a small scale you know but this is a more scientific this is view of a organized uh, rmc plant we have seen one view of unorganized rmc plant but you can see how well maintained rmc plant this this one is you should go to such plants and get your concrete how to uh, protect the aggregates the aggregate should be put under a shade like this we should not store the aggregate in the hot sun because the temperature of the ag aggregate affects the quality of the concrete in terms of the, the water demand and slump loss and you can see the sp sprinkler here the sprinklers are you know uh, used to keep the concrete in cool condition particularly in summer uh, this we have already seen uh, difficulty in placing concrete due to reinforcement condition i will not repeat anything in this we have already discussed this couplers also uh, we have discussed because of the couplers the placing of the concrete becomes very easy because uh, more space is available now uh, what are the preparations we have to do before placing the concrete when we are doing the um, uh, concreting for the flooring the compacting of the soil trimming and moistening the subgrade etc is required then the uh, the shattering and the fog work has to be you know checked for its rigidity we can't allow you know uh, flexible uh, unrigid kind of uh, uh, shattering material because it will lead to accidents and plus it will also have many other uh, problem like you know distortion and leakage of cement layer etc the reinforcement steel and other embedded material they have to be secured in place they have to be properly tied up the covers will have to be provided properly okay while well, placing the concrete it should be placed continuously as near possible as its final position 
complete placed in a form may be dropped at a height not more than 5 feet rate of placement should be such that previously placed concrete uh, has not set when the next layer is placed upon it so you can put the fresh concrete on a dried concrete concrete should be placed in the wall uh, slab foundation etc in horizontal layers of uniform thickness and each layer should be thoroughly consolidated uh, the segregation of concrete uh, should be avoided you can see here a uh, few pictures where concrete is being placed uh, mechanical placing of the concrete you can see the concrete is being pumped and you know it is flowing like uh, or oh, water it is so homogeneous and so nicely mixed you can see the flow here uh, the concrete can be placed through the pumps you can see this is a pipe placed here and concrete is being placed on the top what is more important is that this pipe should be clamped at different levels here see this it is freely hanging pipe it has not been clamped with the supporting structure there is no support provided here this should be avoided because this this will lead to accident many times you know if the, if the joints they break the pipes will break and you know it will lead to major accidents and concrete should not be dragged like this he is trying to see the concrete is placed here through the pump and he is dragging it to the desired place it should not be done this concrete should be placed as near the final location if you want to place the concrete provide extension of pipe here and place the concrete here only this dragging will make the concrete until the segregation which is not recommended uh, concrete placement through boom pumps is also very common for major projects you know uh, where you know uh, your transit mixer cannot reach under such situation when such difficulties are placed uh, then you know in such situation the boom pumps can be used for placing concrete these are modern techniques which are commonly used then we come to the compaction of the concrete compaction is very important you know uh, if you don't compact the concrete your best of the best concrete produced in the rmc plant or in your batching plant will will not give you desired result and durability in terms of the compressive strength and durability the so compaction of concrete is very important if there are 5% voids in the concrete it will reduce the strength to the extent of 30% the main job of compaction is to expel the air which is there in the concrete the entrapped air has to be expelled and if there is air inside the concrete it will create voids so method of compaction you know of course you have to use the vibrators needle vibrators uh, form of vibrators table vibrator platform vibrator or surface vibrator depending upon what kind of work you are doing but 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 compaction should be done absolutely properly uh, how to do the compaction again is a very uh, million dollar question uh, as shown here the needle has to be put vertically inside the concrete it should not be put horizontally and uh, the the distance between these you know two locations where you put the needle should not be more than 1 feet because you know there is a radius of action if you put except suppose 2 feet then you know there is no overlap of this radius of action there should be always overlap of radius of action well compaction is done thereby you ensure that the whole uh mass of concrete is compacted this is one more view of uh, compaction uh, you can see here this is a old layer of the concrete and this is a new layer of the concrete the needle is put vertically and the needle has uh, entered into the old concrete at least you know it should enter by 2 inches it should not be like this here you see this concrete, this needle is it, it is you know in the top layer only it has not entered in the bottom layer so what will happen there will be a separation layer between this fresh concrete and old concrete it should not happen these these two layers of the concrete they should merge together because of 
this needle penetrating inside here. Now we come to finishing. Uh, finishing is very important uh, activity because you know all concrete has to be finished properly so that you know you get the desired size of the size uh, of the slab for example you know, if your slab is five inches by finishing you can make it exactly five inches otherwise what will happen at few places the slab would be only four inches at some places you will be six inches so that is number one benefit the uniform surface uh, uh, you will get after finishing uh, what are the uh, tips for doing finishing steel floats should be avoided you should preferably use wooden floats like this because steel floats will make the surface very smooth and it will make you know a lot of fine particles come on the top of the slab and uh, it will uh, it will you know bring all the fine particles on the top and latents would be formed on the top of the slab and it would lead to shrinkage cracks your concrete should appear rough when you finish it so uh, avoid we should avoid sprinkling of dry cement powder on the concrete surface we should avoid rubbing the surface with neat cement paste we should avoid over vibration which will result in bringing too much slurry to the top surface and personally i feel that you know all concretes which uh, are finished they should have rough surface like this you know. No, no surface should be left smooth because smooth surfaces, particularly in in a residential building, let us say, or in a commercial building, uh, when you provide tiles on the top of the slab, the smooth surface will debond the bedding water of the tile, and the tiles will come out in the process after maybe two years or three years. If the surface is rough like this, then in that case, what will happen? There will be proper bonding between the bedding water. And the tiles would be there in in the, that position for uh, maybe 10 years, 15 years without any damage. So I was talking about the broom finish. So brooming should be performed before the concrete has thoroughly hardened, and all concrete should be broom finished. That is my strong recommendation. Smooth finishing should should be avoided. Surface protection is very important. Now you have done everything all right, but if you don't protect the surface, then again, you know that the concrete surface is exposed to sun, wind, rains. The concrete will get damaged. So the freshly placed concrete should be protected immediately. Now, for example, concrete roads are protected by using these tents, which are moving on the wheels, and you know it will protect it from the harsh, uh, hot sun. It, it will, uh, you know, it is protected and cured from, uh, you know, protected from drying, and there is extreme change of temperature also. So all the damage because of that can be protected. Then this concrete can be, you know, uh, surface can be protected by using these wet Hessian clothes like this. What is more important is the early curing. Once the concrete is poured, within two to three hours time. It starts drying. That is the time when you should start, uh, you know, using uh, this uh, moist spray for keeping the concrete wet. Concrete should not be allowed to dry. Once it dries, it means it will start giving you, you know, shrinkage cracks. Before it starts cracking, it should be, you know, moist cured. We can use hessian clothes like this. Wet hessian clothes. We can cover the concrete, line. or we can even. Uh, put tarpaulin sheets on the top of the concrete, which will prevent the evaporation of the water from the concrete. Column curing is very badly ignored everywhere. You know. Number one, there is a vertical surface. On slabs, you can make the pond and put the water continuously. But what you will do here for the column? So here, you know, the frequency of pouring water on this Asian floor has to be increased. Every one hour, you know, Somebody has to go there and spray water on this and keep it wet. That is the best thing you can do. And why we do curing? Curing is nothing but we are trying to, you know, prevent the evaporation of the concrete water. 
by doing the external curing. If you don't do curing, whatever water you have added in concrete for mixing at the time of mixing, it will evaporate, and concrete will have you know uh, less water for hydration process. And there will be less strength. It will affect the durability. No strength means no durability. So that should be avoided. The in small towns or even in major you know projects also this this is a desi way of curing columns. You know this is a small plastic you know container with a hole here at the bottom. They fill the water once in the morning, once in the afternoon also, and like drip irrigation, there will be drip curing. Continuously, water will fall here, drop by drop. There is a wet hazy flow, and the concrete will remain wet throughout the day. And even you know, at night also, again before leaving the sites, this can be filled up. And you know, this will ensure the best curing for the columns. Then, curing of the slab, I mentioned to you, uh, the ponds, the pond can be formed, you know, by providing small bunding. And you know, uh, concrete slabs are the best cured normally because of this uh, horizontal nature. But the worst part is the beam sides and the columns. We have to take extra care to see that you know these are cured properly. Then concrete the roads can be cured, you know, like this. This truck is having this arm with perforations. It moves along the roadside, and the concrete can be cured. And these days, you know, where water is scarce, or where the people cannot reach the uh, site properly, they use curing compound. Uh, they spray curing compound. One good example of using curing compound is Hyderabad Metro, where you know it's 80 kilometer uh, length is there. Uh, LNT has done this project. They have used curing compound for the entire superstructure. <coughs> so how many days we should uh, do the curing? That is also a question. In normal weather condition, OPC-based concrete we should cure for minimum seven days, and uh, in harsh weather condition, OPC-based concrete ten days curing. And when we use blended cements, the curing should be done for ten days in normal weather, and in harsh weather it should be fourteen days. So as a general rule, we should. Consider that everywhere there is a harsh weather condition, and we should cure the OPC-based concrete for minimum 10 days, and we should cure blended cement concrete for 14 days, for, and plaster, brickwork, etc. We should cure for again minimum 10 days. Now, if we don't do proper curing, it will lead to plastic sinkage cracks, and plastic sinkage crack is nothing uh, but you know because of that. Drying of the top surface, there is a volume change. The top surface dries and shrinks, whereas the bottom of the slab is still wet. It is holding the full volume, and there is a difference in the volume, which will lead to the cracks on the uh, on the top of the surface, and that is why this curing is very important. Early curing is very important. In summers, particularly, we have to take extra precaution because you know rate of evaporation is very high. The aggregates have to be stored in the shed. You can perhaps use even uh, ice or cold water for making concrete. Then the sprinkling of the water should uh, be done on the aggregate so that the temperature is not uh, you know going up. Then even the formwork reinforcement etc. also can be sprinkled with water to. So bring the cooling effect just before concreting. In concrete cubes, uh, they are not filled properly at most of the sites. You know, uh, there is a standard procedure. We have to uh, fill you know concrete cubes in three layers, and then after filling the cube, you can't just allow it to dry up in the hot sun. It has to be put in the shade. It has to be uh, kept in a Standard temperature like 27 plus minus 2 with 90% humidity, 90% plus humidity. All this has to be followed, and then after 24 hours, you have to demold it and then put in the water for water cooling. The rate of loading is also very important. Uh, 140 kg per cm square per minute is the rate of loading that has to be maintained. 
the rate of loading should not be more or less. In both the cases, you will get misguiding results. And when should we remove the form work? Vertical form work to the columns, say, uh, uh, in one day, 24 hours, then slabs, you know, and beams. Beams can be, uh, as a general rule, the shuttering can be, the bottom shuttering can be removed after 14 days, for slabs after 7 days. Uh, we have almost come to the end of our presentation. Uh, after having gone through all this, I, I have to say something that there is a need for introspection. In most of the sites in our country, the following points in totality or in different combinations are encountered. Number one, people want to switch over to different brands of the cement owing to marginal difference in price. This should not be done, you know. Uh, different cements are having different chemical properties and, you know, from that point of view, at the max, you know, you should have two brands of cement, one as a fixed brand, and in case of emergency, if that brand is not available, as a standby, as a backup, there should be another brand. For, you know, a short period, you can perhaps go, but then uh, you should not switch over from one brand to other, just because, you know, some competing company is providing you cement at lesser price. That should not be the criteria. You should go to the standard cement companies. Then there is low reliability in quality of aggregate these days, you know. Uh, the, either you get undersized or oversized aggregates. So you should not change the source of aggregate. Once you fix it, uh, for whatever reasons, then improper water cement ratio is another problem. We discussed that. Then use of hand mix concrete for structural members like column, etc. should be strictly avoided. Unscientific approach for compaction of concrete should be uh, out of question. Curing of concrete is many times neglected. We have just now seen how many days the concrete should be cured. We should follow that. Then desettering of structural members should be done as per the uh, as per the provisions made in the BIS, or you should ensure that the proper strength is achieved by crushing the complete cubes, ensure that the required strength is available and then the desetting should be done. It should be done in a scientific manner. And compatibility of construction, chemical, super plasticizer, you know, etc. with cement is normally not ascertained. The people blame either cement or the plasticizer. Mostly they blame cement. But it is not the case. Cement is good, plasticizer is also good. But they both are not compatible. In such situation, you have to uh, select the right type of the plasticizer which is compatible with cement. So in concluding remarks, I would say that only using good quality materials will not improve the durability and service life of the structure. Good concrete structures can be built, provided good construction practices are followed in following areas. Like selection of uh, concrete ingredients, right type of materials, right concrete, for appropriate end applications, right concrete means right grade of concrete. Then proper mix design, batching, mixing, transporting, placing, compaction, finishing, protecting, curing, etc. Then accurate reinforcement detailing, adequate cover, good quality form work. Then safety is very important at sites, you know. At the cost of safety, you can't, you know, go and get the quality safety and the maintenance, housekeeping, etc. is also very important. And overall, holistic site management plays a very important role in this. Uh, well, uh, that was all from my end. Thank you very much. Now, uh, if there are any questions, we can take up a few questions and I will try to answer them. I know. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shrikant. Uh, that was such an enlightening session. You drew uh, so many insights from your vast experience. I'm sure all of our viewers uh, would have benefited immensely. Thank you once again. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. Thank you. Uh, to all our viewers, uh, thank you all for being such a wonderful audience. Uh, in case you have any questions, feel free to connect with us. We'll be happy to sort your questions and queries. So do stay connected and keep watching 
further interesting webinars in the connects webinar series have a good evening stay healthy stay safe thank you i think there are many questions uh, coming uh, related to the steel actually uh, i would yeah. request uh, yeah. uh, our friend uh, ravi to take care of those uh, questions related to the steel uh, pertain pertaining to jsw steel what kind of you know uh, steel they are manufacturing and so many other areas uh, they want to know about so i would uh, rather request you to handle those questions related to the steel directly with the viewers and if there are any other questions related to cement and concrete perhaps uh, i would have like to uh, you know take up right now but there is uh, hardly any time left now you know i don't know whether there are any one or two questions i can take uh, uh, there is one question which says does epoxy coating increase the durability uh it to certain extent yes it does but you know uh, epoxy coating uh, uh, has its own limitations uh, uh epoxy uh, uh, you know many many sites they use epoxy coating but it has its own limitation you know to an extent it does increase the durability you know? but you know uh, you can't uh, avoid rusting if this epoxy coating gets removed the spot rusting starts and you know that is very dangerous you know once the rusting starts then you know you had it so as long as the coating is there it's fine but it is very difficult to maintain that coating because during the uh, placement of the steel the coating gets you know removed and you know it is then that is a, a very vulnerable area for the spot uh, uh, corrosion you know. maybe one more question i can take What else? Unfitting wooden shuttering is going to leak. Yes, right. Yes, right. Ah, there is one question that uh, whether we should provide the cover blocks under the electrical conduits in slabs as well. Yes, I would recommend that. You know. Uh, says there is one more question. We say that whether cement wash is recommended in exposed steel during construction. Cement wash is a uh, temporary thing. You know, it it really doesn't uh, help you beyond uh, an extent. You know, it is a temporary solution. then there is one more question which says that we should use scc to avoid segregation and the maximum dye aggregate shall be 10 mm sir with which material the couplers are made these couplers are made with steel only yes self compacting concrete is the best solution but one has to look into the cost aspect you know it is roughly around 10 to 15% costlier than the normal concrete then uh, another question i think uh, uh, we are running short of time uh, i have provided my email id uh, and you know you can Uh, send me the questions i will try to answer uh, as many questions as possible if you send me your questions on the mail also so with that i think uh, i say once again thank you very much for all who have joined this webinar and i thank jsw once again uh, jsw steel once again for giving me this opportunity to be uh, with the technocrats today this evening thank you very much